Welcome everyone, I'm Ricky from Tech Talk and today is my full review on the brand new Oppo Reno 2. This launched in September 2019 and today we're going to go through its key highlighting features, also go through the specs of our device and understand more about our Oppo Reno 2 and actually just sit back and enjoy the review. To start off with, let's talk about the colour options that are available because they are quite nice. To start off with, I have a luminous black here that twinkles and twilights in the light depending which way you actually actually shine it and obviously it looks blue. It looks like you've got a halo of light around this Oppo logo down here which looks really nice. So this is luminous black. It also comes in ocean blue which gives you a colour of the ocean. Some more greens and slightly a little bit more blue but it looks really nice. So coming back around to the front that is the actual colour options that are available but let's actually delve in and look around our device and learn a lot more about it. So starting off at the top this is a housing for your motorised pop-up camera or shine thing designed camera here. Obviously on top there you do have a microphone but we'll delve into the front facing camera a lot more. But let me just show you what it looks like. I'm just going to open the camera app open. There we go, it pops up and it comes to say hello. So it just comes out here, it's a set 11 degree angle, it takes 0.8 seconds to actually arrive and pop up and it's quite wide as well which is really nice. Press this and it'll dismiss and it'll pop back down, which is really good. So coming down the left-hand side, you've got your volume controls, which are black in colour, but they are textually different compared to the bezels, so you can actually feel where they are. You have antenna bars on here as well for signal strength. Also, you get to notice the thickness of our device. Now, it has two different thickness in size, so it varies from 8.5 millimetres up to 9.5 millimetres, depending from top to bottom, but otherwise, it's very sturdy and very strong in your hands, which I do like. Turning to the bottom of our device, we have a 3.5mm headphone jack, so quite a traditional headphone jack there, and Oppo have decided to keep this in here, which I'm really pleased about. You then also have another microphone, which helps for recording audio or recording a video with the back-facing cameras. You then have your charging port, which is USB-C, for syncing and charging your device, and you have a fairly large battery on this device as well, which is about 4,000 mAh. And next to that, you do have its only speaker, so it only has one speaker option on this device, but it's quite a large speaker, and it does does sound really impressive. So coming down the right hand side, first of all you're going to notice your power button which is very identifiable by its green colour and obviously that is what Oppo uses. So it's nice there, it is actually different in colour. Obviously textural as well, you can feel where that is which is helpful for you. Also you're going to find your SIM tray, obviously this device offers a dual SIM option or you can use a nano SIM card and also a micro SD card support up to 256 gigabytes. So of extra storage on your device which is really helpful. So as well as thickness on the device, the phone has a really nice weight to it, as it is made up of Corning Gorilla Glass 6 on the front, Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the back, and then with an aluminium frame. It gives a weight of 189 grams, which feels really good in your hands. Turning to the back of our device now, this is where it can shine and show you so much, and that is thanks to its 3D curved body, which pulls in the light and then just shines it back off to you. So moving on to our cameras, and there is a fantastic array of different cameras here, that can use different modes and you can shoot whatever you want to. First of all, you have an ultra clear main camera, which is a 48 megapixel in size, f1.7 in aperture. And that's the Sony IMX586 sensor that we've seen now with a lot of flagship devices. This also offers optical image stabilization, which is known as OIS. Underneath that, you have a telephoto lens, which is 13 megapixels in size. That's an f2.4 that offers autofocus. You then have a wide angle lens lens which is 8 megapixels in size which is f 2.2 in aperture this offers 116 degrees field of view and as I said with some of my other reviews the ultra wide lens is so much fun and you can just enjoy it you can get everything and everyone in your shot and I think that's one that everyone is using these days finally you then have a bokeh lens effect which is 2 megapixels in size f 2.4 this offers six different portrait modes so you can really enjoy getting them portraits so coming back to the telephoto lens you have five times hybrid zoom and 20 times digital zoom. You have AI noise reduction, optical image stabilization and EIS which is electronic image 
voltage stabilization. So which really helps actually make a steady shot come true. And the hybrid zoom mixes both optical image stabilization and digital sort of stabilization zooming. So you should be able to get a perfect shot. Like I said, you do have a dual LED flash. Then you might notice or say to me, Ricky, what is this little green dot here? This is called an O dot and it's textually different. So if I bring it up here, you'll notice it sticks out a tiny bit. And this is actually really important because when you put it down on the desk, it's not your camera lenses that's actually touching the desk. Because look, if I just tap this down, the bot top section goes down. It's actually that O dot is sitting on, so it's really quite impressive. It's a nice little added feature they've thought about. This means your lenses don't get damaged when placing on a desk or placing on a hard surface. They are well protected, which I think is really important. So a couple of other modes why I'm showing you through the actual camera application and showing you some images I've captured on this device. One of them is being ultra dark mode, so you can really take a great shot at nighttime. It's really quite impressive. It does take a slight couple of seconds to take this photograph, giving multiple different exposures, and it actually picks up everything you need to see in the dark, which is really quite impressive, and I've really enjoyed that for taking photographs at nighttime. It also offers portrait mode 2.0, it offers AI beauty mode, so you can make yourself look beautiful. Everyone is beautiful beautiful however they are. But also it has HDR portrait options so you can get high dynamic range portrait. When it comes to video recording there's a couple of different options. So you can use 4k at 30 frames per second. Sadly there's no 60 frames per second but you understand why when I tell you the price. It offers 1080p at 60 or 30 frames per second. 720p at 60 or 30 frames per second. You also get a couple of extra features as well with the video. One is the ultra steady video support which is 1080p at 60 frames per seconds so it only works with that option then you have video dynamic zoom which supports 1080p at 30 frames per second and with that you can change the level of zoom and reduce wind noise and also sound focus so focus is actually on the person you want to actually capture in your video very impressive i've actually shown that some of the times through my videos so now turning back around to the front of our display and one other thing i want to talk about before i actually talk about the display is the inbuilt fingerprint sensor which is actually built into the display display. So tap and wake is very simple and very easy to do. You can register multiple fingers and I haven't had any issues. If you do have any issues, you'll be asked to use your pin pattern or password as your backup option. It's relatively quick and very accurate as well, which is nice to know. But talking about the front of our display and what we'll be looking at all the time, and you're not distracted either. It's a full display. You don't have no notch. You don't have no teardrop notch. You don't have no punch hole. You have nothing because you have that motorized raising camera at the front. You have a full display display which is amazing very thin bezels around the outer edge as well but talking about a display it's an AMOLED display which is 6.5 inches in size which is always corner to corner the resolution is 2400 by 1080 that gives a pixel density of 401 you have a 93.1 percent screen to body ratio which means you get so much more screen to body which is really impressive. You have over 16 million colors and it also offers up to 500 nits of brightness, which I think is really important. Here in the UK, you don't really need that now this time of year because it's gray and miserable outside. But if you're in a bright country and you want to put up the brightness so you can see it when out in the bright sunlight, you can do. Also, as I said as well, protection is key. And like I said, this phone is actually quite weighty and that's because it has Corning Gorilla Glass 6 on the front for protection. And it also has Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the back. And then around the outer edge is an aluminium frame. So I'm just going to jump into the camera here and we're going to make our other camera pop up here. You get a halo of lights which is really nice. So the front camera offers 16 megapixels in size. It's an f2.0. It can record video at 1080p or 720p at 30 frames per second. So the camera lens itself only takes 0.8 seconds to swivel out which is really quite quick and it also goes to the perfect angle which is 11 degrees which means you can get your perfect selfie or everyone into your shots. Also it offers another great feature as well if I hold it up here and I'm going to drop my phone it offers something called full protection. So what it means is it's detected that it was going to fall and it put the camera lens away as well which is a really cool, important thing to have. I really do like that on here. Even if you add a little bit more pressure as well onto here as well, 
It sort of holds back, but then if it's too much pressure, it will push away. Simply by going back home, it closes it back up, and it goes into its housing at the top here, which I showed you. The front-facing camera also boasts to have the world's first pop-up camera with a bokeh effect video. So you can use a bokeh effect video with your front-facing camera. So Oppo used their own Color OS 6.1, which is based on Android 9, and I really hope it gets the push to Android 10 relatively soon. We use most devices now with Android 10, and I prefer the Android 10 subtle little changes and the way it works. But ColorOS is okay once you get used to it. So it's an overlay, a bit like what we have with EMUI, the Xperia service, the One UI. All different manufacturers have their own options. ColorOS is slightly different and it's quite blocky, as you can see here, different blocks, quite a simple interface as well, which is quite nice. Like I said, you can change your brightness. You've got quite big tabs to press as well. So from an accessibility point of view, a good option to have. Obviously, we do have our accessibility settings on here. And as you'll notice, I've got an accessibility man down here. I did go through all the accessibility settings and relatively impressed with them. As you can see along the bottom here, we have our three capacitive touch buttons. You have your home, which will always bring you home. Pressing and holding will ask Google. Hey Google, how many days till Christmas? Christmas day will be in 30 days. Okay, so not long now till Christmas, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel for my Christmas rundown. Next to that, you have your menu button, which opens up your applications, and you can go through and you can dismiss one by one, or can click the X here, and that will dismiss all, which is quite helpful. Then finally, you have a back button as well to always come back if you want to the option of coming back. Coming over, we've got some applications here. Coming over to the far left-hand side, so this is where your Google News would be on some devices. Oppo have their own option here, and you can set and change this depending on you. So I've got my calendar at the top. It can count your steps for you. We've got some photos here. So you've got different options to choose from. So quite nice options there to have. So if you want to customize or change your device, you can do that as well. So just simply pinch in and you can change the widgets. You can change the wallpaper. You can add different options depending on you, which I think is really important. But I like that customization options that are available. As I said, I've got all my applications here, which work fine, haven't had any issues with. I've had a lot of social media sort of files on here, working social media wise, done a bit of gaming as well and experienced it. But it's mainly the camera, what you'd use this device for. So moving on to power and performance now, let's talk about the processor. First of all, it's the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G, which is eight nanometers in size. This boasts an octa-core processor with two cores running at 2.2 gigahertz Cairo 470 gold and then six cores running at 1.8 gigahertz and that's Cairo 470 silver so there's enough power and performance in here to run all them key applications you want to and you can enjoy your gaming on your device. Also when it comes to graphics its GPU is run by Adranu and that's the 618 it offers eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of internal storage. Then coming around to its battery and the way it charges, this is where it gets really impressive. And I found it super quick as well to charge up. So the battery inside this device is a 4,000 minute hour battery, which is really quite high. And that's really good for the price point. Wait until I tell you the price points. And this uses VOOC flash charging 3.0, which means you can get 51% of charge in as little as 30 minutes. I've done a test with that and I've been really impressed with that. I actually match the results that they said. It will offer up to eight hours of continuous gaming, which is all good, you can game all day long, and up to 13 hours of continuous video playback, which is amazing. It also offers Bluetooth 5.0, which I think is really important to have now because all our devices are being more connected to multiple different things. If you're like me and you use card services to pay for a lot now, I like to have that on my device. And NFC is supported, so you can use that if you so wish to. So a couple of extras that I want to show you and talk about. One is games. So any gamers out there, you've got a beautiful big display to play on, an AMOLED panel, 6.5 inches in size, and you've got a whopping 4,000 mAh battery, which means you can game for ages. So they have an app here called Game Space, so you can add games once they're downloaded, it'll be added in here. Obviously, not all of them are supported, but most of them will be. But actually inside here, you can change the different options that you want. Competitive mode, you've got balanced mode, and then you've got low sort of power consumption. So if we turn this down here, it sort of all changes, goes a little bit gray. But I like the effect here when you go into competitive mode. Gets you ready to get in that game and really enjoy your game. Obviously you can change and adjust sort of what notifications you're gonna get through. You can block calls as well and you can show calls incoming. You can ignore calls. You can just choose whatever option you want to. And obviously it's showing our connection there as well. We've got a stable internet connection, which is really helpful. I think a great application.
So one thing I will note about this device as well, it's very slippery. So I do recommend putting it in a case. So Oppo Reno 2 actually came with a free case in the box. I'm not too sure if it's gonna do it with a retail model, but as mine was a press model, it did come with a free case, which is really helpful. And I do use that all the time because this is a very slippery device and constantly in my hands. I don't want to drop it. I do recommend putting it in a case, but otherwise it is a slippery little sucker and it will get away from you. So as you will notice, and as I said quickly earlier, was about accessibility. So accessibility was really good to see all the settings on here. So at the moment we've got accessibility menu. I can just jump into anything I want to, but we did make an accessibility video for the Oppo Arena too. And I was really impressed with the mad settings they've actually included now and more options they have made available. So previous models, I couldn't recommend it. It just wasn't available, it couldn't work for people, but I would highly recommend this device now for anyone with additional needs that need to change or adjust their device to use it for themselves. They do have enough accessibility settings on here to make it easier to use, which I think is a really good thing. So overall, this device comes highly recommended from me. I do think it's a great device, especially for its price point. So here in the UK, it's available for £450 SIM free, which I think is a really good price point and potentially Oppo might have undersold this compared to the specs you're getting. So it has enough power and performance in here to run any games or any movies and it's so nice to sit back and actually watch this on a massive display this size and without a notch as well, you're not interrupted. It comes complete as well with an array of snappy cameras that can take any photo day or night depending on what you want to take and it's really impressive. If you want to see more photos please go to my Facebook or Instagram pages and I have more photos that I share in dedicated albums. Also this device can be bought from the Carphone Warehouse or EE so the links will be in the description. But like I said if you do want to buy it sim free it is only £450 and that is a really good price and I highly recommend it. As long as you're okay with ColorOS and getting new Used to the new system that's fine i switch and change between systems all the time so i'm so used to it now but for me also i want to know if you have an oppo reno 2 or an oppo reno device what do you think leave a comment down below it's always great to hear from you and what did you think of my review some feedback is always helpful while you're down there please give the video a like as it really does help support the channel also to stay updated with all of my latest videos make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be notified when i release new videos on the channel for me ricky and the brand new oppo reno 2 i will see you very soon bye for now